Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out another sub $200 PC. This time it's from Lenovo. They're getting themselves into that uh, segment of the marketplace. This is their IdeaPad 100S. It is a uh, pretty much a standard $200 PC. It's got the Atom Bay Trail processor. It also has two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage and the 11 inch uh, 1366 by 768 display. So it's very much configured like many of the other $200 PCs we've seen over the last two years. And it performs about the same also. It's a little bit better in some areas, which you'll see uh, as we start stepping through some of our usual tests on it. Uh, this is not an IPS display, but it does have very nice viewing angles depending on uh, what you're looking at and the lighting in the room. It's actually a pretty nice display. And Lenovo displays tend to be nicer for the money than I've seen on other brands. So this is uh, certainly continuing that uh, trend there. And the other thing I found interesting is that they put a micro SD card slot here on the side. Uh, so if you want to augment that limited 32 gigabytes of storage, you can uh, pop a card in here and have it with you all the time because it will be flush to the side of the device. Uh, unlike other computers we've seen that have just like the SD card that kind of sticks out. This one you can put in the micro card and walk around with it. I think you can go up to 128 gigabytes on that card. So you can have a place to store media and other large files. It just will be slower than its own internal storage will be. So you may take a little bit of a speed hit there. The other thing I like about it is that it's got a display that will go all the way down to the table like this. So Lenovo's done a lot on their hinge design and they've put uh, some of that knowledge into this product. And what's nice about this is that if you have a kid that uh, might be prone to pushing a screen back, sometimes they don't know their own strength, uh, you can often snap them in, in half essentially if you're not paying attention. Uh, this one will kind of give you a little bit of leeway in that it will uh, go all the way back. It doesn't go past that point though, so if they keep going with it, uh, they'll certainly break it at that point. But uh, you've got a lot of leeway here that you may not have on a computer uh, at this size. I like the keyboard a lot. It's, it's pretty much following the Lenovo design uh, language here. You've got those curved keys, but uh, they're nicely evenly spaced. They're a decent size. Uh, very nice to type on them. I think this is among the best keyboards I've seen uh, on a $200 PC. Uh, the trackpad's a little different in that it's going back to the button design here. You can, of course, tap on it to uh, select things if you want just by tapping, but you're not going to get a click out of the pad. Uh, the clicking comes here at the bottom with uh, the two buttons here. So I usually disable the tapping just because I often accidentally uh, set it off, but uh, you can tap the pad as you might normally, but the uh, two buttons down here are uh, probably the preferred way to do it because it doesn't, doesn't click. It doesn't have that same feel that a lot of other trackpads have. It also doesn't do scrolling when you do two fingers on it either, so it lacks some of the gestures that uh, we have come to uh, get accustomed to on some of these trackpads. It's a little bit uh, minimized there. As for ports, there are a few. There's the HDMI output here, of course, so you can plug it into an external display. Uh, you do have to uh, disable the internal display to get the full resolution out of here if you want to go to like a 1080p display, but it can drive that. Uh, we have the SD card slot that we talked about. There's a headset adapter here, so you can plug in a uh, just a standard analog headset, and you've got a little VGA webcam up here. Not the best quality camera in the world, but it's good enough uh, for making web conversations and whatnot. And you have uh, two USB 2.0 uh, ports over there. It's so a pretty lightweight design overall. It's about 2.2 pounds, uh, very easy to carry around, and uh, looks pretty nice too. There are a couple different colors available also. Oddly, they placed the speakers on the bottom of the computer. There is some decent stereo separation having them down there, but uh, depending on the surface you have the computer down on, uh, it may sound better or worse than what you might be uh, expecting. So uh, I'm not going to really rate this very highly for its audio clarity. I would definitely suggest plugging in headphones if you want that. Uh, the speakers are a little bit tinny, and then again, depending on what surface you have it on, uh, it's going to sound a little strange because it is basically projecting the sound into the surface that it is laying on and not uh, outward towards you. Uh, just for battery life, there's a pretty much a range between, I would say, six to eight hours. Uh, if you're doing a lot of uh, more intensive things on it, you'll probably see closer to six. Uh, if you're doing web browsing with the screen uh, kind of dimmed down a little bit, you can get close to the eight hours that they are advertising on this device. So uh, battery life is kind of in the middle on this, but uh, good enough to get through a school day at least uh, and maybe a work day too. Now we're going to take a look at its overall performance and see how it does on our usual tests. All right, let's go visit the New York Times real quick and see what's going on. I'm finding that depending on the day that you visit the New York Times, you might have a better experience or a worse experience. Today is going to be one of those worse experience days where I think they sell a lot of space on their website for Sundays. Uh, so there's a lot of JavaScript and a lot of other stuff loading in here. So once the page comes in, you got to wait for the flash and all the other junk to uh, appear on screen. This might make a good argument for running an ad blocker on something like this just to keep the performance up. Uh, we will uh, visit another article here so you can see how quickly things render on page. It does take some getting used to not having that two finger scroll that I've really gotten accustomed to on most of the computers I use, both uh, Mac and Windows. So uh, you can really, uh, I really miss that. Uh, but here we go. You can see the screen now uh, finally rendering in. There's a lot of like, there's two ads 
ads appearing on this page that are running video. So you have to wait a second for those to spin up. But once they come in, uh, the web browsing experience on here is just fine. Uh, by the way, this is not a touch screen. You're usually, usually not going to find a touch screen at this price point. Uh, so just bear that in mind. There's no, no touch screen on here. You're going to have to use the trackpad for all of your browsing. Uh, but one thing it does do pretty well is 1080p 60 video here. So we have uh, a video from my YouTube channel running at 60 frames per second that looks pretty nice. Uh, the display on your camera, on my camera to you, uh, might look a little more on the blue side than it looks like in person. I can say that the color is uh, pretty balanced, although it is a little bit colder than some other LCD displays that I've uh, tested. By colder, I mean there's a little bit more of a blue hue that you might uh, see on this screen. Not as bad as it looks like on my camera right now, but uh, just bear that in mind. It is a little bit of a colder looking display uh, for watching video and other things, but uh, it's able to keep up with the 60 frames per second video quite nicely. And on the Octane Benchmark test, it gets a score of 6,510 using Google Chrome. This measures its ability to render HTML and JavaScript on page. So although our New York Times example was a little sluggish today on a Sunday, uh, it on paper performs pretty much as well, if not a little bit better uh, than most of the competing computers at the same price. All right, next up, we'll check out Microsoft Word, and we have our uh, usual template that is always good at killing our computers. This is a newsletter template, probably the worst thing that you could uh, throw at this device. I do like that they have page up and page down keys here right on the keyboard, so that's a little bit easier than having to uh, hit a function key with something else here. So uh, as we scroll through the document here, you can see it's rendering things uh, relatively quickly as we're moving around. Again, on par with other uh, Atom Bay Trail devices, we can reflow text here uh, and work on our document uh, without a lot of sluggishness or lag here. So I think if you're editing simpler documents, it's going to be even faster. And this is the area where these kind of computers really excel at uh, is word processing, web browsing, email, and other low-end tasks. Now we're going to stress it a little bit more. Let's take a look at Minecraft. I was actually very impressed with its Minecraft performance here. We are running with the OptiFine plugin, which does give us a little bit of a performance boost on uh, some of these uh, lower end machines. And we're getting a solid 30 to 40 frames per second here as we're uh, running through our Minecraft map here, which is really, really good for a low cost PC. Uh, sometimes I'm seeing as high as like 47 to 50 frames per second, depending on what I'm looking at. So uh, very impressed with its uh, speed here for uh, Minecraft. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we get a score of 1,183. And this test is a really good way to measure how it might do on more modern games that tax the hardware a little bit more. So as you can see, it doesn't uh, perform well as a gaming PC in that regard, uh, but things like Minecraft and other games that are not as demanding on uh, the processor and video hardware that are built into this computer uh, will actually perform pretty well. So I think if you are a fan of tablet games and other casual games, those will be fine here. Uh, you're not going to run Grand Theft Auto or something more advanced on it. So that is the Lenovo IdeaPad 100S. I think it's a really nice value for the money. Uh, very lightweight, uh, nice and thin, really good looking computer. Pretty well built too. I really like the fact that you can bend the display back this far and not have it break, which is always good when you have kids around. So it's nicely constructed. Uh, the trackpad is my only real complaint as far as its usability. I'm getting used to having those click pads uh, and I'm not getting all the gestures that I usually get with my trackpads on computers. So that's my only uh, weak spot that I've detected on here. But uh, beyond that, it is a pretty solid piece for the money. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.